By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at something special, the finals of the Goblin Hero Charity Cup 2024 held in New Jersey. And I mean, this is quite special. I got an email from the organizer of the event, Jonathan Lay, and he asked me, would you like to put the video online? And I asked like, what are you guys all about? What are you doing? And he explained that he was organizing the first charity cup in New Jersey. So like I said, the Goblin Hero Charity Cup. And then he was raising money for the Fighting Children's Cancer Foundation in Fairfield. And they actually raised two and a half thousand dollars. So here you can see the group. I mean, applause to you. Respect to you guys. I mean. Raising so much money for such a good cause, that is truly impressive. And it's my pleasure to make a video out of uh, the finals. I'm looking forward to it, actually. We have Dom, who is on uh, Blue and Red Burn, and he's taking on Lee Vang, who's on Blue, uh, White and Red and Aggro. It's a very aggressive build. Now, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. They're playing according to the Atlantic rule set, by the way. That means Fallen Empire is real and Mana Burn is real. But before I jump into the deck decks, I would first like to let you know that, as always, you can also choose to first go to the finals, check out the deck decks later. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. So just click on there. It'll take you straight to the games. Okay, and now that uh, you're all informed, I'm going to continue with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of Dom, Blue, Red, Burn. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Dom. So this is really your counter burn deck. And I think it's mainly burn. It's, it's really, I mean, what I noticed here, and I've, the counter burn list has become... Uh, again, popular here in the in the in the, the Netherlands, and it kind of comes and goes. You know, when when somebody has a good result with it, then counter burn is back. It's it's never really gone gone, but you have moments where it peaks more than than other times. Um, it's interesting to me to hear to see this Atlantic list. I know when we're playing it in in Europe, usually people play it with Iron Claw Orcs or with Flying Men, and then of course all the decks have Surrender Befreed. In this list, though, you see that he didn't go for Flying Men or Iron Claw Orcs. The only creatures in here are the Surrender Befreeds. Of course, you also have the Mistress Factories, who are basically creatures as well. I count them as half creatures, half mana base. Um, but he's chosen to fill in that slot with, I guess, the four Black Vices. So if you play Black Vice, it's like having extra Lightning Bolts, right? Not always, but if you have a turn one Vice, it's going to deal three damage to your opponent. Also, Black Vice works together really well with the Draw Sevens, the Wheel of Fortune, the Time Twister. And I mean... This deck, we don't really have to have a long talk about the deck and the strategy of the deck because the strategy, it's pretty, pretty simple. You want to burn your opponent out. You want to put as much pressure on the board, like get an early surrender out perhaps as well, turn it sideways. It's a super aggressive deck, right? I mean, look at the direct damage that this beast is carrying. We've got four lightning bolts, four chain lightnings, the full play set of uh, psionic blasts here so that means you've got 40 damage alone on direct damage and then you can add the an early vice up here on 43 points of damage it's just insane and the worst thing is when you're playing against these decks and i can tell from experience sometimes you know you've taken all the damage you're on what like eight or something but you think in the back of your head okay i've stabilized and there's a lot of burn in his graveyard already so i'm not safe but I, i'm kind of okay-ish and then they draw into a Time Twister on a Wheel of Fortune and they refill their hand and they find more burn. Obviously, Time Twister is the definite MVP or potential MVP of this deck because you shuffle back the cards in your graveyard right back into uh, your main 60. That, I mean, those moments are just so incredibly, uh, incredibly painful. What I notice about this list, just a little thing, is um, the choice to play uh, Blood Moon main. Um, and I guess that's a medical. I guess there are a lot of good stuff decks around there in uh, in New Jersey, which is also the case here. But when you look at the whole list, it's so aggressive that a Blood Moon almost doesn't fit anymore. You know what I mean? Because a Blood Moon is more to make sure your opponent cannot do anything to kind of, you know, it, it's more a control card, I guess you could say. I'm not saying it's a wrong choice here. It's probably a really good choice here. 
but I just noticed that. Like you could consider maybe even uh, even playing a Fireball or a Disintegrate main as well, something like that. But I guess the meta has a lot of those good stuff decks, and then of course a Blood Moon can really shine. And a Blood Moon in this deck still means that you can play out most of your cards, because the only card that needs double blue is your Counterspell, and there are only three of those in this deck anyway. Um, and of course, okay, of course you also have the Mana Drain True, so you've got basically four Counterspells. Uh, in the sideboard, interesting card, Psychic Purge. Uh, which I really like. It's like this little goofy card, anti-tech for the him to Turek. It's one blue, it deals one damage to any target at sorcery speed, but if you're forced to discard it, you can deal five damage to your opponent. And I just, the art is so goofy as well. It's just a really fun card. And it's a card you see a lot in, in formats that allow Fallen Empires, because of course, when you allow Fallen Empires, you're going to run into a lot of him to Turex. Uh, talking about him to Turex, by the way, they're not here in the finals because the opponent of Dom today is not playing black either. Uh, talking about that, let's take a look at the deck of his opponent. And here we see the list of Li Wang. And I mean, look at this. This is, I mean, dang. You guys love burn over there in New Jersey. This is another burn heavy deck. Look at this. Four bolts, four chains, four psionic blasts. Wow, burn, burn, burn. And then we have... Creatures, at least we got some creatures. Surrender Befreed, Four Savannah Lines, and I love this, Four Occasion Javelineers. I think Occasion Javelineers are really nice. Um, the Occasion Javelineer is a 1-1. One -one, comes into play with the Javelin Counter. Very flavorful because he's holding the Javelin. You can tap it and then remove the Javelin Counter to deal one damage to any target. So that can be quite useful against like 1-1. One -one, little 1-1 one -one creatures or 2-1 creatures that you have to face, like the Savannah Lines, actually. So they can be quite good and it's a guaranteed one point of damage to your opponent as well, if need be. And remember, you're burning, you're racing, so sometimes that one point can make all the difference. Um, and then in the sideboard, I'm just going to kind of go to the sideboard real quick because I see a COP red in the sideboard. I think the COP red could be super decisive, of course, after sideboarding. It's only one. It's a one-off, so it's not going to be... If you don't... There's a big chance you're not, not even going to see it, but if you see it, that could be a game changer. Um, and of course, we see red elemental blast, blue elemental blast. So we're gonna gonna have that happen again as well a lot in this matchup. When I'm looking at this, I think maybe before sideboarding, there's a uh, maybe a, 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 a small advantage perhaps for Li Wang for the simple reason that a lot of cards in his hand are really cheap to cast. So that means that the four vices in the deck of Dom are not going to be that good. Then again, if Dom finds a draw seven, it, it's it's still really good, you know, because you're still bur you're still dealing damage to your opponent. If you have a turn one, you're still going to deal some damage to your opponent. So you still get value out of the vice. But there, there, that's a little silver lining. And after sideboarding, you know, you've got the COP red. But um, yeah, this is going to be... Th this, this finals could be over very quick, you know, or it could be one of those moments where they race, race, race. They run out of cards. Both players are on like four or something. And then it's going to be a very strategical game. You know, that could, that could happen as well. I can see that happen. But uh, wow, just lots of burn in this finals. So uh, yeah, this is a deck of Li Wang. We looked at the deck of Dom, and that only means one thing. We are ready to go to the finals of the Goblin Hero Charity Cup. Here we go, people. Game number one, here we go. We've got Li Wang sitting on the left. So he's playing uh, blue, white, red aggro. Ooh, there's the hand. That's good. Surrender Befreed, Bolt in there, Occasion Javelineers, Disenchant. That's the Ice Age version, by the way, of Disenchant. So pretty decent hand. And here we see the hand of Dom. Ooh, he's got a vice there. I think, exactly, I think it's Li Wang on the play. Starting here with the Occasion Javelineer. So coming into play with the Javelin counter. Just a little 1-1 one -one counter he can take off to deal 1 damage to any target. Has to tap the, uh, the Javelin to do so. Ooh, a Library of Alexandria. That is huge. Yeah, you just got to play out the low, all right? He also has a Mox in hand, so he could draw a card, go up to 8. Play the Mox. Could consider going for the Vice, since the Vice now at least deals one point of damage still. There we go. Oh, man, what a great opener here for Dom. This is really good for him. And, uh, yeah, I mean, just pass the turn, right? This is ideal one point of damage here for Li Wang. And, I mean, what he needs to do is just uh, pressure, 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 and hope for maybe a Strip Mine. There's a Volcanic Island. Attacking for one here, and there's a tap for two. Going to take care of that uh, Mox Sapphire with the Disenchant. And pass the turn uh, back here, probably. Exactly. Yeah, of course, not very happy here uh, facing that Loa. That could be uh, such a good card, especially in these decks. 
because one of the problems with these aggressive decks with a lot of burn is that you can run out of steam but of course with the loa you can just continue playing your cards and uh, keep putting pressure on the opponent only four cards in handy for lee wang so he's not taking any damage uh, now just gonna draw card number five i believe there's another volcanic attacking here for one so Don dropping to 18 and there's the surrender Befreet. so that's a three four from arabian knights does deal one damage to you as well so that could be a little bit risky playing against the burn deck, but um, I mean, you got to play it out, right? You just got to put as much pressure here on the life total of Dom as you pos possibly can. Because, I mean, he's drawing twice as many cards as you, so you basically have to. Seven in hand, it seems. Passing the turn. So that means four more points of damage possible, uh, potentially here for our Dom. So Lee Wang drawing another card. Playing a Mistress Factory. There's the attack for four. So that means he's going to drop to 14. And there's another Ecation Javelinier. So more pressure on the board. And again, that comes in with a 1-1 Javelin counter, of course. Yep, there's the counter being placed and uh, the turn being passed on to Dom. And I mean, if you're Dom, you can start considering, I mean, you could play a land here, play out that Surrender Befreet in hand. That would be a pretty good blocker in this scenario. There's also a Factory, probably going to tap the Library now for a card and then play out the Surrender. Or does he have 9 in hand? Now that could be the case too. Then he's going to go down to 7 here. Ooh, now he's got 6 in hand. Yeah, made a little mistake there. Yeah, unfortunate here. Should have first uh, drawn a card with the Loa and then play out the Surrender. But hey, mistakes happen. Remember, these players have been playing the entire day. And Li Wang dropping to 17. Could attack now for 5. Well, actually, he can't because of that uh, Surrender Befreet. So he's going to deal 1 point of damage. And then he's going to use a Bolt here, probably, or a Chain Lightning. There we see a Chain Lightning. That's better Sorcery Speed. So, I mean, this is a really nice way of seeing how you can also utilize that 1 point on the Acacian Javelinier. I mean, all of a sudden, your bolts and your chains become killers for Sarah Angels and Surrender Befreets and Sangue Vampires. It's quite nice. And there's the attack, by the way, animating the factory, dealing six. Look at this. So Dom dropping to eight. Really getting into the danger zone here. And remember, the Soyani Blast there in hand is also going to damage Dom as well. So this is not looking good for him. So despite the Loa... It's not, uh, it doesn't seem to be his game. Going to draw an extra card here. I mean, he's still an 8. Okay, there's a time walk. So maybe he can do something with that. Let's see what he could do. I mean, he could, he, he could strip, for example, the Mistress Factory. Play out the time walk as well. The problem is, if you're Dom, your deck is not built to be on the defense. Your deck wants to attack or at least throw burn spells to your opponent. But he can't do that right now. He's got to focus on staying alive. So he's going to play the Time Walk. Yeah, he's got 7 in hand. So could go for Strip. My next turn, draw into card 7. Use the uh, Library of Alexandria. And he is going to attack you for 2. Why not? Li Wang being completely tapped out. He's going to drop 2. Well, Oh, he could block actually and deal the damage. That would have been interesting. Although, does that card have Summoning Sickness perhaps? That's probably why he cannot do it. Anyway, uh, untap here for Dom. Going to draw into seven. Going to tap the Loa probably here for card number eight. Exactly. There we go. There's a mountain. Yeah, I mean, what you really want here is just a bolt. You could play the Psionic Blast on the Surrender, but then you would drop to six. It's really tough for Dom here, actually. He's not in a good place at all. You kind of have to play that Psionic, right? But then you dropped his six, but you have to. Also, you want to do it now that Lee Wang stepped out, cannot play a counterspell. There we see the Psionic Blast exactly. And I mean, if you're Lee Wang, you don't mind. You're like, okay, you dropped his six. Remember, Lee Wang is also playing four bolts, four lightning bolts, four Psionic Blasts. So he's doing what he can, dropping to six. Problem is he's going to go into bolt range next turn. Because Li Wang has three uh, Javelineers on the board. There's another Vice. So those Vice is doing very little. There's the pass. Yeah, this is really bad news for Dom. He needs a little miracle here to still survive this. There's the attack. So it's going to drop to three. Does he have a bolt or a chain? Does he have it? Yes, he has it. That's it. Wow. 
you know, and this kind of shows, okay, uh, Library of Alexandria, it's a great card, but if your opponent is able to just be super aggressive, and Li Wang definitely is, then, I mean, it's not gonna save you, you know? And, and I think Dom really needed some bolts here to kind of clear the way. Anyway, this was uh, game one, pretty exciting stuff. And now both players are going to dive into their sideboards and we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two here between Li Wang and Dom. And Dom, of course, on the play after losing that first one. And look at that hand. He's got Red Elemental Blast, Serenda, Blue Elemental Blast, Mox Ruby, Fireball. I believe a land in there as well. So pretty decent hand. Look at that. So I guess, by the way, that we are playing with uh, proxies. I believe that card's called the Blacker Lotus from Unhinged, uh, the card in Li Wang's hand. And I guess it's a Black Lotus here, so you can just sack it for three. There's the Mox Ruby and the Volcanic and the Pass from Dom. So let's see if he's going to use that Black Lotus uh, in turn one. Has some options there. Savannah Lines in hand, I believe, as well. Chain Lightning, Disenchant. So it could just go for Plateau into Savannah Lines and pass. That's exactly what he does here. There, there's the Savannah. Also has a Wheel of Fortune in hand there. So probably wants to empty his hand pretty quickly. So that would be an incentive to actually play the Black Lotus. There we see the card. So the Blacker Lotus. <laughs> I forgot what it does. Tap and sacrifice or something? Rip it up? I forgot. Let me know in the comments if you remember. I wonder. I mean, he's got Disenchant in hand and he's got the Chain Lightning in hand. I mean, you don't really want to play the Chain because he can already send it back. And then he could kill your Lion, actually. So here's the Disenchant, I guess then he's got one white floating still, so Disenchant on the Mox Ruby. And then he's going to use his Chain Lightning, because uh, Dom can no longer send it back, so he would go to 17. Of course, he could consider floating the mana from the Ruby in the mana pool. What you can then do is the opponent to say, I'm going to go to combat, because then it goes out of the mana pool, and then play it in your second main. Anyway, there's the pass here from Li Wang. So pretty explosive start for him. I believe only one card in hand. And oh, two cards in hand. So that one card is the Wheel of Fortune. The other card, I mean, if it's a land, that would be perfect for Li Wang. Anyway, let's have a look and see what Dom is going to do here. Soul Ring on the board. Yep. That's pretty good. Finding that Soul Ring and uh, playing the Serenib. It's quite nice. Also means that Li Wang cannot attack here with this uh, Savannah Lines. Okay, there's a Mox. This is a perfect scenario here for Li Wang, right? Finding that Mox and land in hand, being able to empty his hand, and now probably going to play out the wheel. Also knowing that Dom is tapped out, so no risk of running into a counter magic. And this is too bad for Dom, actually, because his hand is pretty decent. I believe there's a red Elemental Blast, blue Elemental Blast, yep. And that Fireball. I think that Fireball, I mean, that card can be decisive, right, later in the game. But it's now in the graveyard. So both players playing, uh, drawing a fresh seven. So let's have a look here. There's a disenchant there in hand for Li Wang that I can identify the Ice Age version. We've got Blue Elemental Blast, Time Walk. And if we look at the hand of Dom, I see a lot of lands. I see a Psionic Blast. Okay, here we see a Red Elemental Blast on the Afrit, meaning he can attack here with the Lions as well. Put Dom on uh, 15, but oh, he's not. He's passing the turn. I think he misses it here. Could have attacked for two. If I'm not mistaken. Ooh, there's a Psychic Perch. That Perch would, do, would work really well on the Lion. Yeah, and I think Li Wang realizes it as well now that he missed that attack opportunity. And that can be a costly miss. With these matchups, Burn Deck versus Burn Deck, every point of damage counts. This is really a game where you can think, oh, I'm on a healthy 12. Well, actually, no, you're, you're dead. I've just burned you out. You know, there's so much burn in both of these decks. There's a time walk here. So it's going to take an extra turn. Hasn't played a land yet, so it could go exactly for Island Perch. Yep, yeah, there we go. Li Wang taking a moment to look at the card. The Savannah Lines is going to die here. Perfect target for the Perch. And now, of course, Dom can take his extra turn. So this is pretty nice for him. He's going to untap, upkeep, draw. Let's take a closer look at the hand, right? We see a Psionic Blast for Dom, a Lightning Bolt, a Strip Mine, 
And Lance, I, this hand is not great. Okay, the factory is, is pretty decent. That's a way to put some pressure on the life total of uh, Li Wang at least. Now remember, Dom only plays with four Surrender Perfreeds and four Mishra's Factories. Those are the only cards that are, uh, that are creatures. And the Factory, I mean, it's only like half a creature, right? Anyway, Li Wang's turn here, playing a Volcanic Island, having that Disenchant in hand. The Chain Lightning there. Okay, he's gonna play the Time Walk first. And I mean, this makes sense, right? You first want to play your Time Walk to see if it resolves. And if it does, I can change your plan. So we see Disenchant in hand, Blue Elemental Blast, Chain Lightning. I believe that other card's upside down. A Psionic Blast, I think. And a land. So I mean, oh, he's going to go for Disenchant here. Yeah, could, could do this, of course, on the Soul Ring because he has that Psionic Blast for the Factory. But you could also think, oh, the, the Disenchant is so nice to play on the Factory. And I'll keep my Psionic Blast to play it uh, directly on Dom's life total. But Li Wang choosing not to, just uh, going to disenchant the Sol Ring. There's a uh, Chaos Orb here. Tapping two, Chaos Orb hitting the board. And then the question is, are you going to flip here on the factory? Or do you think, you know what, I've got the Psionic Blast. I mean, Chain Lightning just looks so bad here. I mean, you could fire it off, but you also take three. That's a problem in this matchup with those Chain Lightnings. Both players playing with red. Okay, I think he's going to activate the Chaos Orb here. Yes, he is. Okay, activating the Chaos Orb. So he's going to flip on the factory. Ooh, finals, a flip in the finals. Is he going to hit it? That's a good flip. So factory gone. And now what? That's the question, right? Both players just playing so much burn. It's like, now what? I think the blue Elemental Blast could be... Crucial for Li Wang, right? Maybe countering that bolt to save your life. And then again, if we look at Dom's hand, he's just finding land after land. More land for him, and he just really needs something else than just lands. Li Wang also passing the turn. More lands, look at that. Deciding not to play out the land. Okay, interesting. There is, oh, a factory there, all the way in the corner, being played out by Li Wang. Oh, look at this Aloha by Dom. So now it's a really good decision that he didn't play out that land earlier. So he's got six in hand, going to draw in seven. So again, he will have Aloha. There's a plateau. There's the attack for two, I assume, here exactly. Going to put Dom, nope, there's the bolt. But there's the blue elemental blast saving the factory here. That is pretty crucial. Because now if you're Dom and you go from 6 to 5 cards, meaning you cannot use your Loa next turn, and you still take the damage, and the factory is still there. So this is just all bad for Dom. Going to draw into card number 6, another land. Yeah, only finding lands here, really land flooded. There's the attack again, he's going to drop the 13. Now he's on 7 finally. There's a Chain Lightning again, not looking great. I mean... Look at the amount of red mana Li Wang has. You can play a chain. He can send it back for days. That means more damage for you. Okay, there's a strip mine. that can at least take care of the factory. There's the pass by Dom. And I'm liking the way that Dom is waiting to use the strip mine. You can, of course, wait exactly until he activates it. Or not. Is he not taking his turn yet? I think Dom is asking for some more time. Okay, now he's passing the turn. So there's the untap. Ooh, there's a low off for Li Wang. He's got how many cards in hand? Five cards in hand, so it's not useful yet. But he could get there. Animating the factory, attacking. And Dom here using the strip, that makes sense. Ooh, he's actually playing out the low. I could have considered put, uh, keeping it in hand. He's got four in hand, so uh, it's going to take a while. And of course, Dom already has the active library. But I mean, look at that hand. He's got two chain lightnings. They're not really going to do much for you. Unless, of course, Li Wang taps out for a Brain Geyser or something. He's got a Psionic Blast, which is nice, but it's also going to deal two damage to you. Oh, look at this. Talking about dealing damage to yourself. There's an Earthquake. I mean, Earthquake, again, not really good in this scenario. There's a Mox Sapphire. There's really not much that Dom can do here. 
I mean, he's on 13, right? Let's say he plays a Psionic Blast. He's probably going to now on this Surrender Pafrit. That means he'll drop to 11. But I think he has to. Exactly. There he goes. So playing a Psionic Blast, and it works. But I think if you're Li Wang, you're like, okay, this is not too bad. You drop to 11. He's got so much burn in his deck. It's going to probably burn him down to zero. Ooh, there's a Wheel of Fortune. So this may sound strange because, of course, Li Wang has the Loa. So if you play your Wheel, you're going to activate the Loa of Li Wang. You don't want to do that, obviously. Then again, look at the hand of Dom. It is pretty useless. So I think I would not play it out just yet because then Li Wang can already use it. But he's got how many cards in hand? Four, five? Four, I believe. So you don't want to play it out yet, but... Later in the game, in a few turns, you could actually consider doing it because your hand's just so bad. They're only Lance. Lance and direct damage cards that deal damage to yourself. So here we see an island. Seven in hand against. Probably going to draw an extra card with the Loa. Okay, he's passing the turn instead, so probably going to do it on end step. Exactly, on end step here, drawing card number eight. There's a Black Lotus, drawing card number nine. Okay, there's a Chaos Orb. So the Chaos Orb can fix the Loa problem for you. Which is good. Counting his cards again. If he plays the Lotus, I believe he goes back to seven. Okay, he's going to tap first play out Chaos Orb. Gonna draw an extra card, gonna go back up to eight. There's a Psionic Blast. There's a Lotus. Oh, he's gonna use it. So it's probably gonna flip here on the library. So we're seeing a lot of flips, I like it. That's a good flip, by the way. Lots of traction. But I would still, I would still consider playing that wheel, I mean. I mean, think about it. Chain Lightning is not going to help you. He's got two of those. Uh, Earthquake is not going to help you. You know, Earthquake is the worst, actually. You know, because you're on 11, Lee Wang's on 19. Um, your Psionic Blast is also going to deal two to you. Look at the hand of Lee Wang, by the way. He's got Psionic Blast and a, and a Bolt, and I think also a Chain. Ooh, there's a Counterspell. That's good. That's useful. Counter Magic can make the difference here. Seven in hand for Dom. Passing the turn. And Li Wang here has a disenchant. A land. Two lightning bolts, actually. Wow. So two lightning bolts, a psionic blast, and a chain lightning. I mean, that's enough, actually, to kill Dom if all of that resolves. Which it probably is not, because we're seeing a red elemental blast here being found as well. Ooh, okay. He's firing off the psionic blast. In response, it's the Ani Blast from Li Wang. So that would mean Dom would take 6 damage here, drop to 5. Li Wang would take 4, drop to 15. Yeah, so this Red Elemental Blast makes sense. So that Sayani Blast, I believe, is now countered. Unless, of course, Li Wang has a Blue Elemental Blast or another counter spell. It's going to tap 1. Okay, there we're going to see the Bolt. So bolt here to the dome on Dom. So that would mean he would drop to eight first. It looks like he's going to play another bolt. So two bolts here. Wow, this is tough. I mean, you could consider countering that other bolt. I mean, it's not the best thing to counter a lightning bolt. But then again, I mean, you're so low. So Dom being on 8, he's going to drop to 5, and then I believe with the damage from his own Psionic Blast, he's going to drop to 3, and 3 is a number you really don't want to be at in these matchups when your opponent has a play set of Bolts, a play set of Chain Lightnings. You don't want to go to 3. But I guess uh, Dom doesn't have a choice, going to drop to 3 here. Remember, he's already a game behind, has to win this to stay in it. 
Or is Lee Wang going to win the Goblin Hero Charity Cup here in New Jersey? There's the draw. Okay, there's another counter spell. So Dom at least has some counter power, but... I mean, he's going to run out of counter spells sooner or later. There's a City of Brass hitting the board. Again, something that hurts Dom. You don't want to use that right now. And I think Li Wang uh, boarded out his Acacian Javelineers. But maybe not. I mean, they're good for a damage each as well with the, with the Javelin counter. There's an Ancestral Recall, I believe. And a Chain Lightning in hand. But remember, Dom has a counter spell and a Mana Drain. But of course, Li Wang doesn't know that. But then again, you know your opponent has a full grip of cards. You're expecting some counter magic. So I wonder what decision Li Wang is going gonna, is gonna to make. I guess he's looking now at the graveyard of Dom, asking how many counter spells have you played out already? First is Sapphire. Makes sense. So he's got Disenchant, Ancestral Recall, and Chain Lightning in hand. Dom being on three, and we know that Dom has a counter spell and a mana drain in hand. There we see Li Wang first going to go for the Ancestral Recall, and I like this play. You know, if Dom wants to counter it, counter it. If not, you draw three cards. Also great. So he's going to draw three. One, two, and three. I wonder what they are. One of, the, one of them is a land, but the Mistress Factory is actually pretty good land in this situation. Okay, he's going to fire off the Chain Lightning. Dom has to counter it here. Are we going to see another... No, no Counterspell in hand. does have a blue Elemental Blast. So this resolves. This happens. He's going to play a Lightning Bolt. And there's the Mana Drain. Yeah, Dom has to, of course. But now Dom is out of Counterspells. But of course, Li Wang doesn't have any direct damage anymore. We see Disenchant, blue Elemental Blast in hand, passing the turn back. So, I mean, Dom is still alive. If you're alive, you can still win it. But now, of course, he can no longer use the uh, Library of Alexandria because he went down to, I believe, five cards in hand. Now drawing card number six. Or this is card number five, actually. Thinking about that wheel. The wheel is risky, though. You kind of have to. You have to play the wheel in a way. Right? But it's risky because you're giving Lee Wang seven fresh cards. But then again, if you let him top deck, second the Lotus. Are we going to see the wheel? There is the Wheel of Fortune. Oh, I'm loving it. I think if you're Li Wang, you're going to let this resolve, right? He's going to play Disenchant in response, okay. Because he's got the blue Elemental Blast, but why would you? You're going to draw seven new cards. So if your opponent being on three and you've got a burn deck, this is ideal. But I get Dom's position. You have to do this. And remember, the cards in his hand were just all bad. Chain Lightning is going to kill you. Earthquake is going to kill you. And Psionic Blast is going to put you on one. So, I mean, in general, looking at the list of Dom, it's going to be super tough for him. You know, to kind of get back in it. Can you imagine if, if one of these players would have had an Ivory Tower? That would have completely changed uh, the game's, game's dynamic. So Dom drawing seven and Li Wang drawing seven. I wonder if we're going to see that Circle of Protection red that was in Li Wang's sideboard. I'm sure he boarded it in. It's only a one-off though, so. So Dom here drawing seven. Let's see what he's got. He's got two bolts, a Psychic Purge, a Factory, I believe. So that Factory is pretty good. He can block Factory on Factory. And he can, of course, put the mana that he still has. It looks like he's got two mana floating. He can put it into the uh, Mistress Factory. Because remember, we are playing Atlantic Rules, meaning uh, mana burn is real. Okay, he's going to tap first uh, to draw a card, of course. Going to go up to eight. Another factory. Okay, that's pretty good. Plays out one Mishra's factory. And then he can use that mana that he's got left to pump into his factory. Exactly. So it's gonna just going to make it a 2-2. Two -two. So that mana burn uh, is gone. Two lightning bolts of purge and lands. That's all he's got. Oh, man, remember that fireball at the start of the game that got wheeled out of his hand? That would have been so good here in this scenario. There's the strip mine. Okay, so he can strip. Exactly, he can... Uh, I would have done the same. Strip the factory. 
you know yeah exactly the loa okay of course normally you would strip a loa but at this uh, moment in the game dom being on three i would have also stripped the uh, the factory here because now you can at least attack and you're going to force dom you know if he has it he has it. he has to play the bolt on the factory when you attack or of course could consider going to one That's not, even, that's not even that bad of a thought, actually, because being on three or one against uh, Lee Wang's deck doesn't make a huge difference. Lee Wang here first going to play out the Surrender Perfect, it seems, or not. Tapping the Soul Ring and the Sapphire. Okay, there is the Surrender Perfect. Has a Lightning Bolt in hand, by the way, so can't already win it. But of course, he's thinking about Counter Magic. Wants to lure out any potential counter magic of Dom. Going to play out the Savannah Alliance. I mean, maybe he's just going to win it by, uh, by creature power. Who knows? He's got another lion in hand. Could play that out as well. Also interesting, he's doing this all in his first main, right? He hasn't attacked yet with his Mishra's Factory. Oh, he's going to pass the turn. Didn't even attack there with the factory. Did it still have summoning sickness, perhaps? There's the factory of Dom. He's going to play a perch here on the lion. Or not. Going to draw a card first. Okay. And then play the perch. Finding a Surrender Perfect, by the way. Again, a card that's not really helping you. The problem here is Dom has so many cards in his deck that actually hurt him. And he has no life gain. There we see the first bolt. Yeah, it's not dead yet. It's got four toughness. There's the second bolt. So, I mean, Dom's doing a pretty good job here at cleaning the board. The problem is he's on three. He's got that Surrender Perfect in hand. Another bolt for the factory of Li Wang if he animates. Li Wang drawing his card here for turn. There's a Tundra. I mean, he's got the Lightning Bolt. He could finish it. But I mean, I think he's worried about the counter magic of Dom. Yeah, now playing the Bolt. Is this it? Bolt, this is it, I think. There's no counter. Yeah, this is it. Li Wang, congratulations. You're winning the Goblin Hero Charity Cup. Well, well done. And here we see once more the winning deck here of the event, uh, the Goblin Hero Charity Cup. But more importantly, I believe you guys just really had a lot of fun. And actually, um, the organizer of the tournament did a great write-up of this event. I'll put a link uh, to that article in the description below. So if you want to know more about the Goblin Hero Charity Cup that was held in New Jersey, have a look at the uh, link in the description below for more information. And talking about the description below, there you can also find a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. Because yes, yes, you can become a patron of this channel. If you enjoy the content that I make, please consider becoming a sponsor of the show. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And if you become a patron, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. Ik het dus, ik het dus, somba kazee!